This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Eric Morton of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit that notifications bell to make sure you never miss the latest from Disney theme parks around the world. Here now is the news for March 27th, 2024. Quickly, before we get going, I want to just say we're uh, preparations are underway for Stage 89. It's a huge event we have coming up. Obviously, it's going to be a large reunion of all these Imagineers. You've seen some of our ads. Uh, you can buy streaming tickets to watch it at home. Uh, we're just getting ready to raise the price of those streaming tickets. Uh, you can get it under the wire still. Uh, you go to stage89.com to learn more information, how you can either stream it online or, or attend right here in person and meet all these amazing Imagineers. Obviously, uh, Tom is gone now as we've uh, heavily <laughs> promoted. And people have wondered out loud, Eric, are you going to re uh, redecorate the desk? I think that's a great idea. Not today, but maybe something's coming. I have heard from Tom. He arrived safely in Tokyo, sent me a uh, video of his new accommodations. It is kind of hilariously small. I think he'll be uh, reaching out to us pretty soon with some content. So stay tuned. Here we go. In a post shared to the Walt Disney Imagineering Instagram account, it was revealed that Joe Rohde would return to Imagineering to lead master class work sessions for fellow Imagineers to attend. The full announcement reads as follows. Beginning this week, Imagineers have an opportunity to participate in a series of master class work sessions led by Joe Rohde. Following in the footsteps of many former Imagineers, Joe continues to mentor and share his years of storytelling knowledge with current Imagineers, contributing to the future of creativity at Walt Disney Imagineering. Before the announcement was made, Rhodey teased his return with a video posted to Instagram of him walking towards the Walt Disney Imagineering building with the caption, do a bit of work at the old farm. Rhodey retired from Imagineering in 2021 after 40 years in the industry. Earlier this month, it was announced that he'd be honored as a Disney legend at D23, the ultimate Disney fan event 2024. In the wake of the D23 announcement, Rhodey took to Instagram to thank his fellow Imagineers and park guests. Rhodey's impact can be felt throughout the Disney parks, having had a hand in projects such as Disney's Animal Kingdom, a Pandora, the World of Avatar, Alani, and Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, among many others. Uh, congratulations to Joe for the Disney legend announcement and for returning to the family. Uh, Central Florida Tourism Oversight District Board of Supervisors announced they have reached a settlement with the Walt Disney Company in their state lawsuit regarding the company's development agreements with the former Reedy Creek Improvement District. The board voted on and approved the settlement during a meeting earlier today. Stipulations of the settlement include that Disney agrees the development agreements and restrictive covenants are null and void. Disney also agreed not to contest the district's assessment that the 2032 comprehensive plan is also null and void. The district will consult with Disney, though, on a new future comprehensive plan. Both the district and Disney will dismiss claims and counterclaims against each other, including Disney's countersuit against the district regarding uh, those public records. The labor services agreement between the district and Reedy Creek Energy Services will end in 2028. Disney owns the long-term mitigation credits and the district will not impede on those credits. The district and Disney also agree not to contest actions of the Reedy Creek Improvement District that took place before DeSantis took over and appointed the current board. Walt Disney World President Jeff Valle issued the following statement. We are pleased to put an end to all litigation pending in state court in Florida between Disney and the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District. This agreement opens a new chapter of constructive engagement with the new leadership of the district and serves the interests of all parties by enabling significant continued investment in the creation of thousands of direct and indirect jobs, economic opportunity in the state of Florida. Uh, that's Jeff Folley, again, the president of Walt Disney World. Uh, Disney's federal lawsuit against uh, the district and Governor DeSantis was dismissed earlier this year, but now Disney, uh, of course, filed for appeal. So that is still pending. Governor DeSantis has also announced that he chose Craig Mateer to take over the empty Central Florida Tourism Oversight District board seat left by Martin Garcia, who was chairman of the board and resigned two weeks ago. Mateer founded Bags, Inc., a luggage handling business that he sold in 20. 
2018 for $275 million. Uh, you may remember Bags Inc., maybe if you used resort airline check-in in the past or the inbound luggage services with Disney's Magical Express. Matera is a prominent DeSantis donor who has served on a number of boards like Florida State University's Board of Trustees, Greater Orlando Aviation Authority, and the Florida Board of Governors. The Florida Senate must now approve Matera's appointment. Proxy advisory firm Egan Jones is the second to endorse Tryon Partners' Nelson Peltz for a seat on the Walt Disney Company Board of Directors. Quote, we see very little downside and a lot of upside in putting the Tryon nominees on the board. Egan Jones said, citing an apparent lack of a long-term succession plan for Disney CEO and a board that, quote, appears to cut off and unwilling to engage with investors and the broader market. Proxy advisory firm Institutional Shareholder Services, ISS, also supports Peltz. Unlike ISS, Egan Jones endorses both of Tryon's nominees, Nelson Peltz and former Disney CFO Jay Rasulo. Egan Jones recommends shareholders withhold votes for Maria Elena Lango Massino and Michael B.G. Froman. They are current Disney board members that are being targeted in this movement. Uh, Egan Jones said Disney's business model is built for the last decade, but not forward-looking and flexible enough to ensure success in the next. They state the current board members have a desire to protect the status quo for as long as possible and at all costs. Disney shareholder votes for the board of directors will be uh, tallied during the April 3rd meeting. People have said, hey, Eric, you never have opinions, never share them. Uh, I'll say on this, this is interesting. It's going to be a big fight. Disney has a site called, I think it's called VoteDisney.com. You can correct me on that if I'm wrong in the comments. And it has videos kind of just saying bad things about Nelson Peltz, you know, an 81-year-old hedge fund guy with no experience with creatives, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the Blackwell's... Uh, bid for board seats is interesting, too, because they also uh, kind of go after Nelson Peltz a little bit. The implication being that their uh, their aspirations for these board seats are personal because they're backed by, you know, a couple of former disgruntled Disney people. A couple of these people are 81 years old, maybe not uh, really looking for long term gains. I think a lot of people will agree that one of the problems that you see in a big publicly held company like Disney is they do kind of strive for short term quarterly gains to pad the pockets of shareholders and maybe aren't looking out for the people who are uh, like me. I don't have a lot of Disney shares, but I do have them. I'm kind of long on it. It's something I've just held for many years and hope it gains value over the years. I don't necessarily uh, think that that means we should chase short-term gains at the expense of any kind of long-term benefits. I think if you look at the people looking for board seats, though, the Blackwell's group seems more serious. It seems less personal, and they have actual people with a lot of creative experience that they're nominating. I think that's a lesser-known fight than the try-in fight right now, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens. You know, uh, the try-in group went out of their way, actually, on their website to say that this is not personal against Bob Iger. They want to work with Bob Iger. It's, uh, you know, some of these other board members that they're going after are people that have experience with, like, wealth management or foreign relations and not really experience that's pertinent to the long-term success of the company. I guess we'll see. I think most people, you know, when you're talking about board seats, probably can't name more than a couple members of the Disney board, so uh, it's probably hard to understand who does what, uh, who's responsible for any good or bad decisions. I think most people agree the Disney board has made some poor decisions in the past, not the least of which was uh, <laughs> making Bob Chapek the CEO. But this is going to be an interesting fight. It's probably worth watching. Uh, I know that most people probably don't care about my opinion, but some people said, Eric never has an opinion. You can share it. That's kind of my opinion. I already voted with my shares. Uh, if you're a shareholder, go vote with yours. I don't really have a uh, recommendation for who you should vote for, though. Harness the power of the cosmos with the new Marvel Avengers Infinity Stone ear headband by Loungefly, now available at Walt Disney World. We first found it at the Emporium at Magic Kingdom. The ear headband is gold and stylized like Th Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet. The bow is glittery with the yellow Mind Stone in the center there. Each ear has the other five stones, Purple Power Stone, the Blue Space Stone, the Red Reality Stone, the Orange Soul Stone, and of course the Green Time Stone. The stones are also on the backs of the ears, of course on the back they add that yellow Mind Stone because uh, that's just in the center of the front, I guess. Uh, the gold headband has the Marvel X Loungefly placard on the right side and is lined with non-slip velour. Sells for $44.99. 
A new black and gold faceted Walt Disney World Starbucks tumbler is now available. We found it first in Creation Shop at Epcot, though it's likely available at various locations across the resort. The tumbler features a dimensional faceted surface. It's kind of different from the other bejeweled or geometric designs that we've found recently. The pattern creates rectangular gem-like shapes in various sizes. One side features the Starbucks logo in gold. The other side has a square inset with the Walt Disney World logo and a black silhouette of Cinderella Castle comes with a reusable straw. The tumbler can hold up to 24 ounces and is recommended for cold beverages only. It's not microwave or dishwasher safe. It can be yours for $49.99. A new Walt Disney World annual pass holder Instagram account has been started by Disney. Guests can find a new account at WDW Annual Pass Holders on Instagram. Launched on March 25th, the new account doesn't have much information on it yet. They haven't posted a whole lot yet. It does appear to promise new content arriving very soon. Their bio reads, here you leave today and enter the official world of Mickey pretzels, park hopping, and endless pass holder magic. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guest Vacations and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. Head over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT and their team will design your next magical vacation from Disney World and Disneyland to Disney Cruise Line to Adventures by Disney and more. They're also able to book those unforgettable VIP tours where you and your group can experience the ultimate park day. The best part? of course, is that their concierge services are 100% free, so book today. The Walt Disney Theater at Disney's Hollywood Studios has reopened after a refurbishment. The theater is part of Walt Disney Presents, located in the animation courtyard area. The carpet is the same design as before, but cast members confirmed to us that it was replaced. The biggest change then is the new seats. The old seats were showing signs of disrepair, and for quite a while, actually. We had some articles about that in the past. In uh, June of 2023, we noticed many of them were damaged and dirty. The seats have been replaced, and they feature a lighter pattern upholstery rather than the previous red seats. They also have nice uh, plastic frames around them. They look really good, I think. Tiana's Bayou Adventure has reached a new construction milestone at Magic Kingdom as a new video posted to social media shows the ride audio is being tested as logs cycle through. In a video shared to X by user Drew Disney Dude, logs careen down the drop as Down in New Orleans, a song from Princess and a Frog, uh, it plays on a loop. The loop appears to really only play about the first half of the song before repeating itself. Tiana's Bayou Adventure is scheduled to open in the summer at Magic Kingdom and then later this year at Disneyland Park. Earlier this week, some construction walls came down around the Frontierland Trace Station near the ride's queue. Uh, Disney Imagineers were also seen on our last episode, I think. They were spotted taking test rides, and these uh, testing signs have been installed all around the lagoon portion of the flume. You can also check our site for new story elements that were announced, including previews of some of those adorable critters that you're going to see on the ride. We have a, a whole story devoted to them. Check them out on our site. A new Job of the Hut popcorn bucket is coming to Disneyland Resort for Season of the Force. The Disney Parks TikTok account shared a look. A Jabba talks and makes sounds. His mouth opens to reveal where you could store the popcorn if you wanted to. It'll be available at Galactic Grill and a popcorn stand near Star Traders. There will also be a Salvage Stormtrooper helmet bucket available at Galactic Grill, Cat Saka's Kettle, uh, Beverage Carts at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, and that popcorn stand near Star Traders. Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo is offering two items, one returning and one new. Uh, fried chicken bows, two crispy chicken bows, spicy katsu sauce, and creamy slaw. Uh, that one's new. And do-back chili noodles, spiced fettuccine noodles, and gingered ground pork with broccolini stems and shredded red cabbage. Galactic Grill is offering food, desserts, and beverages. This includes a new Bantha burger. Uh, we're going to have that Bantha bur burger, chorizo loaded fries, Wookie Parfait, Watermelon Slush with Death Star Glow Cube, and new Granny, uh, Granny Smith Apple Slush with Millennium Falcon Glow Cube. Cat Saka's Kettle will serve up new Kelto Slush, and Milk Stand will bring back the Toydoria Swirl Green Milk. Ogus Cantina is reviving options previously found aboard the Galactic Star Cruiser at Walt Disney World. And they'll have some of the souvenir glasses as well from the Sublight Lounge there at that hotel. Drinks include Oga's Obsession, the Fiery Mustafarian, Silver Sea Martini, Chandrillan Chalice, and Chandrillan Orb Glass. Ronto Roasters will have 
Pasana Punch. Disney's Grand F Californian will also have several treats and a signature cocktail. Uh, you can, of course, check out our story for all those details and more. Tokyo Disneyland has announced a new first-of-its-kind Marvel overlay for the It's a Small World attraction. It's going to be called It's a Small World with Groot. Here's the press release from Uriyasu Chiba. Tokyo Disney Resort announced It's a Small World with Groot will premiere in winter of 2025, featuring characters from across the Marvel Cinematic Universe designed in the endearing style of the Tokyo Disneyland attraction. It's a small world for a limited period, marking the first appearance of Marvel characters in an attraction at Tokyo Disney Resort. In the attraction, it's a small world. Guests board boats for the happiest cruise that ever sailed around the world and are welcomed by Walt Disney Animation Studios characters, as well as children and animals from around the world. In It's a Small World with Groot, Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy film trilogy and his friends from Marvel Studios films are visiting Earth for vacation. Groot encounters his friends in various locations on Earth and experiences their regional cultures and music with them, as well as with children from all over the world. Enjoy all the fun moments Groot has spending on his vacation with friends. Guests will continue to see their favorite Disney characters from Disney animation films throughout the world. Don't miss... It's a small world with Groot, where for the first time, characters from Marvel Studios will be featured in an attraction at Tokyo Disney Resort. Uh, dates have not been announced, but It's a Small World will close in fall of 2024 for the installation. Uh, if you want to hear Tom's reaction to this, maybe he'll give it to us on Tom's Tokyo Minute coming up later this week. I did talk to him on the phone. He wasn't super stoked about this one. For the absolute latest on these stories and all those that didn't make it to today's show, be sure to check www.nt.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDW Interglobe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, and more. A special shout out to all the WIGS members watching who make this show happen each and every week. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Eric Morton saying enjoy the rest of your today and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow.